Hey guys, it's Sandy here, and uh, if you watched my previous video, you'll know that uh, the neighbors next door didn't really care too much for uh, my playing last night, so I had to cut the demo out. So, uh, since they're not here right now, and it's obviously daytime, <laughs> instead of nighttime like last time, I'm going to do it now. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to go through uh, clean settings. I'm going to do like a bridge, middle, neck, sort of clean passage. And I'm going to be playing on my Jet City 112 combo. It's the original one channel. I don't have the, uh, the dual channel yet. So I'll let you guys uh, look at the settings uh, before we begin. So here are my settings for my Jet City 20 watt combo. Um, the only thing that I've adjusted from uh, this video and um, my Dean video are the gain and the volume. I basically lowered the gain and raised the volume so I can get a nice clean sound. And uh, the EQ will have to be adjusted later on because this guitar is a bit brighter sounding than my Dean. So uh, we'll do that later, but for now I'll let you hear what it sounds like now. So if it appears to sound really crisp and brittle, um, it'll sound a bit fuller in uh, the next little bit. So try not to fault me for that. <laughs> hear the difference between the pickups which I think is kind of a signature thing with active um, you get a really nice even uh, EQ I guess and it's also higher output so it's a bit brighter sounding especially with the bridge um, but it doesn't really quite catch uh, some of the uh, different things that I do which uh, I'll show later but anyway so one of the things that I do like about active pickups I'm normally a, a passive user but one of the things I do like about active pickups is that the uh, response is very even. So you get a nice cleanness and you can hear all the frequencies, especially because I choose a lot of odd chords. Um, sometimes with passive pickups, you hear the bass frequencies more than you do the treble frequencies, or the mid range kind of gets lost. So I'll just give you a couple examples. Um, we'll do this on the neck pickup. The, uh, so normally, you know, the you can hear every note. response is very even and all the frequencies seem to mesh together really well, which is what I like about active pickups. I'll get into uh, the reason I don't normally use active pickups a bit later, but first let's get into something a bit more gainy. <laughs> So I've adjusted the gain a bit, so um, I lowered the volume to a little under one, just so uh, my neighbors don't complain too much. <laughs> and I've adjusted the gain to about six and three quarters, just a hair above seven. So yeah, let's uh, do some gainy stuff. And we're on the bridge pickup too, I forgot to say. So. <laughs> you 
Take the midnight subway train <laughs> Calling all the shots <laughs> I think you're in I, I can't do it <laughs> I can't sing and play at the same time <laughs> Sorry But uh Yeah, one of the things I noticed, especially rolling the volume Is that uh The volume is really stiff It's very like ugh. Like it's not really quite snappy like I'm normally used to, but I can definitely tell it's high quality because you don't hear a lot of pops and crackles, like no, that's, that's one thing I do like, is that, especially with my Dean, I don't know if it's just because it's, it's a used guitar, um, whenever I roll the volume up and down, you hear little, shh, little crackles, but I think if you just clean out the pots, it'll be fine, but yeah, <laughs> so that's one thing I like about this guitar. Um, and another thing I noticed after playing it for a while is that the neck is really beefy for a uh, bolt-on. Normally, bolt-on necks are associated with like shredder-type guitars, where the neck is like super duper thin. And uh, even though this neck is a bit thicker than uh, most guitars I played, it's not particularly uncomfortable. I've my personal preference for necks is uh, basically like a Les Paul sort of neck, but a little beefy. Just a tad. Because I'm mostly a rhythm player, so I'm mostly playing up here. I don't really go down here so much. <laughs> so, uh, since I play up here, having a thicker neck up here, you know, just makes the notes ring out a bit more. It feels like you're grabbing a big boy guitar, not a tiny little, like, $100 Shredder Ibanez Elio. <laughs> okay, so I've tweaked the settings just a little bit. Basically, tweaked the mids, decreased the treble a little bit, um, boosted the uh, bass a bit. So, um, it's still fairly trebly because that's just the way I like it, honestly. It is a bit warmer sounding, hopefully. <laughs> so, uh, we'll do, I don't know, some basic rhythm stuff. I mean, I'm a rhythm player by trade, if you can say that. Uh, so, that's what I mostly do. I don't really do the whole solo -y stuff. So, uh, let's do a couple riffs that I recently learned. So, try not to fault me for the uh, crappy playing. <laughs> something you guys might remember. I'll just roll the volume down. Just a quick little clean sound without me thinking with the settings too much. So let's do a tune you, you guys might remember if you've been following my riff ideas. <laughs>
something like that. I'm a bit rusty with the heart turned black, but uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's do some other tunes. I normally favor middle position, but for some reason on this guitar, the neck position is really nice. So let's do uh, something with uh, power chords rather than bar chords, so it's not going to sound quite the same. Quite the same. <laughs> version of the cumbersome. Uh, let's see what else. and stuff I've been working on. A little rusty, but uh, you can get the gist of it. So, uh, just uh, we'll, let's do some final uh, notes and analysis and stuff like that. Um, one of the things I like about this is that uh, there's a thing called a, a volute. Volute? <laughs> I know in my other video I said like fluting or flouting or something like that, but I looked it up and it's volute. And it's this little bump right here, you see? It strengthens the uh, headstock and the neck, so that not only gives it a little bit of resonance and tone and volume and all that jazz, but I found out a lot of high-end guitars use this, including uh, Steve Vai's uh, Gem, which, since he's the master of sustain, practically, <laughs> you know, it's kind of nice to know. Um, let's see, for ESP brand tuners, these are in-house tuners. I don't know if you can see that here. Let's you can kind of sort of see. There we go. Okay. So 
for ESP brand tuners, they're pretty good. They're probably the best, uh, you know, in-house brand tuners that I've come across. Um, they're not quite Grover good, but they're close. And uh, let's see, what else can I talk about? Oh, the strings. Um, these actually came with uh, with these strings. I didn't put on a new set. These strings came straight from the guitar, and I guess they're like uh, like SI like some kind of brand name I've never heard of before. But they're pretty good. They're uh, a bit warmer sounding than I normally like. I normally go for kind of the bright, snappy strings like a Diodarios or GHS Boomers. I love the sound of the Boomers, but I love the feel of the uh, Diodarios. Uh, so if somebody out there can make a string that uh, matches the best of both worlds, I'm all for it. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, active pickups. <laughs> I uh, have a love-hate relationship with active pickups. On one hand, uh, I think that they're kind of a one-trick pony. They're mostly used for uh, either especially clean passages where all the... Uh, the mix is kind of self-compressed. You don't need a compressor pedal to squeeze everything in. So um, all the frequencies come out very even, and there's not a lot of muddiness to it. Um, so that's good. And also for rhythm playing and metal and stuff like that, it's really good. But if you're doing kind of alt-rock, punkish stuff like what I normally do, eh, active's not really what the way to go. So. Um, I might switch these out in the future, I don't really know, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, let's see. And also uh, the frequency response for certain things that I like. I favor more of a, a mid-range sort of tone, and uh, most of these pickups are geared towards metal, so the mid-range is scooped, so that's why a lot of the, uh, like, you know, the little harmonica, or the natural harmonic things that I was doing didn't quite come out right, and I know a lot of people would be like, dude, turn up the gain, you'll hear everything. Well, yes, and no. <laughs> so, anyway, also, um, since this is a bolt-on guitar, I don't normally play bolt-ons, I'm more of a, like a Les Paul kind of guy, I like a, I like a good set neck. Um, but I do have to say, I love a good bolt-on, and ESPs probably make the best bolt-ons uh, as far as consistency goes, and I like this little cutout right uh, here-ish because one of the problems I have with bolt-ons is that the cut is uh, that the actual bolt is like square; it's not really ergonomically designed. And also, if you look close enough, there's a slight cut there too. It's it's very slight. You might not be able to see it because it's black, but it's a nice little cut just for your hand. So I thought that was a, a nice little touch. Um, let's see. I really love the uh, the simple control layout. I'm all for simplicity as far as controls go. I don't like a lot of knobs and switches and doohickeys and stuff. You know, just give me volume, three-way toggle, maybe a tone. Honestly, I don't really use it. I just have everything cranked, pretty much. <laughs> uh, the only thing, the only other piece of electronics that I normally dick with besides those are. Like if it has a kill switch or something, like if I'm killing it during when I'm talking, but most of the time I can just roll the volume down and you know won't hear anything. So anyway, um, other things that I like about this guitar, uh, this is the first guitar I've owned that has 24 frets. <laughs> so that's uh, definitely something cool. Um, one thing to note, um, I'm used to playing like 22 and 21 fret guitars, so there's not a lot of space. Here, I'm normally, since I'm a rhythm player, I pick right in the middle. So I pick normally right around here-ish. So I normally pick right around here-ish. And normally the pickup is not there. It's pushed up a bit because there's not these two frets. So it's definitely going to take some getting used to, so I'm not scraping the pickup so much. Um, which is another reason I don't normally like strats. I mean, yeah, I had one, but... Uh, I don't normally like to play strats is because that middle pickup normally gets in the way of my picking. It's a it's a nice little guide to tell me where to pick, but uh, it normally just gets in the way, so that's why I'm normally a two pickup kind of guy. So um, let's see other stuff to talk about. 
Yeah, this guitar is shiny as all get out. It's, it's pretty gunked up because, you know, I used it. But uh, I'll try to get some of that Dunlop, uh, was it Dunlop 66, that uh, body cleaner, string cleaner, stuff like that. I'll try to get that um, either today or when I come back from leave. So I'll be able to keep this all nice and pretty lack. So yeah, this is the Andy Son, signing off for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to my quick and dirty demo of my LTD Viper 330. And I also got to thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And once again, got to give a shout out to the man that made this all possible, the Tone King. And uh, I really hope that he keeps on running these contests. They're a lot of fun. Um, he normally does like pedals, guitars, cables, stuff like that. So if he's ever running a monthly contest, uh, definitely, definitely enter. And you too can win some fine gear. <laughs> and as always, we'll see you guys next time. Rock on. Later.